everyone, KK here. I hope you all are doing well. I wanted to start a new series on my channel and I hope that you guys will enjoy it. So I'm going to give it a go and I'm going to title the series um, Lift a Layout. And essentially the concept for this is to scrap lift um, layout or cards. They can be done by either well-known scrapbookers, perhaps you saw them in a magazine or you saw them on Pinterest. Um, it really doesn't matter where they're from or how much you scrap lift from them. It could be a direct lift where you use all of the same supplies as the original artist or perhaps you use the same layout but different supplies or maybe it's just one thing that you take from that layout and you incorporate it into something of your own. The reason that I wanted to start this series is because I don't know about you guys but I get so caught up on trying to create something new and different that sometimes it just takes the joy out of scrapbooking and with so many resources to find you know layouts and things that we love and that inspire us it's kind of pointless to have all that at your fingertips if you don't use it and I thought that instead of you know everyone acts like scrap lifting is a bad word and you should never do that I thought I would just embrace it. I would embrace the fact that I do see lots of work out there that I admire and there are so many talented people in this industry and I wanted to create something similar or exact to what they created and make it even more special because it contains photos of people that I love and stories that I want to tell. So I thought I would just start this series and I hope that you guys will play along with me. So for today, I've printed out a layout. <clears throat> and I apologize that it's not in color, but my printer is out of ink. So it's really a bad um, printout here. But this is a layout that was done by Lynn Kahari. And I misspelled her name the first time. And she did this for Crop and Create Delivered. And there's a process video that goes along with this. And I'm going to link that down below so that you guys can pop over and have a look at what Lynn did. <clears throat> what really spoke to me about this layout was this die cut shape right here. I just thought that was really nice. And, and I thought it was really clean and I like the way she used the pattern papers behind it. I just really liked it. So on my silhouette I created this um, shape that is very similar. I tried to do it kind of exact but I don't know that I really captured it at all. But anyhow this is what I have and I've cut it um, to this size. Um, I'm not sure exactly what size this is um, it's about, it's 5 by 7. <clears throat> so I've cut it to 5 by 7 and I'm going to use that for my starting point, kind of. And I've gone ahead and pulled some papers and I thought I'd just show you the materials that I think I'm going to use. So I'm going to set this aside. I pulled a sheet of white cardstock, sheet of craft. Um, the majority of these papers come from For the Record 2 by Echo Park. So this is from that collection and this one's called Borders. It has these really nice borders on the back. But I thought I might use some of this kind of tan or craft with text. <coughs> this sheet is from that same collection and it's called Advertisement. So it has that on the back. But I thought I would use this side that has the black and white polka dot. Here I have a sheet from, or a cutoff from the random collection by Crate Paper, and it's called Textile. That I might use that yellow side. This one's called Floral, I believe, and it's from the For the Record 2 collection, and I thought I might look at this yellow as well. This one is from a We Are Memory Keepers collection, and I don't remember the name of it but it has quite a bit of distressing here on the edge so I'm not sure if I will be able to incorporate that or not but I thought I'd throw it in there just in case. This is Strawberry Tiny Dot from Echo Park Dots and Stripes and it's kind of a tone on tone polka dot. Sorry my stuff is kind of going away and it's bothering me. <coughs> there we go. 
This one's from Studio Calico, and it's from the yearbook collection, and it's called Most Likely, and it's a red wood grain, so I thought I might incorporate that. This is from the This and That collection from Echo Park, and it's called Numbers, and I thought I might use this. It's kind of a tone-on-tone -tone type of ledger. This is from Bella Boulevard, Spring, Flings, and Easter Things. It has this floral on this side and a tone-on-tone -tone chevron. I also thought I might use this cutout. That's the stitch paper from My Mind's Eye from the On the Bright Side collection. This is from For the Record 2. And I don't really know the name of this one because I've already cut it off. But it has this kind of blue, fancy type print. It has these diamonds on the back, but I was looking at that blue. And this one is the journaling cards for that section. And so I'm not sure if I'll use one of those, or for that collection, I'm sorry, or this tone-on-tone -tone blue. Lastly, I have this fancy floral. This is from, on the record the first one, the original one, and I really like this blue with cream, so I might use some of that, but I'm hoping to incorporate some of this floral pattern, just because it kind of marries all the colors together. I have the blues, the greens, the reds, and the yellows, along with some black and white, or black and cream in here, so I thought I might do that. I've also pulled this sticker sheet from For the Record 2. And um, I'm going to try to incorporate a few of those elements. I've pulled one set of alphas right here. They're just um, a black and white polka dot. There's actually two pages, but some of them have been used. So that's what I have left there. <coughs> I have these craft corrugated alphabet from Pebbles. So I might try to incorporate those as well as some smaller alphas that I'll need to pull out once I begin embellishing and putting it all together. So that's what I have to start with. I'm going to go ahead and get started. And thank you so much for joining me today. And please don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know what you think about the series and if you'd like to see it continue. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in a bit. Alright, I've got my completed layout and I'm ready to have a look at it. I'm going to put lens layout here just so we can go ahead and look at the two side by side and see how I um, changed up this layout just a bit. So you can see that starting from the base I kept the polka dot patterned paper that Lynn had used in her layout and um, I also kept the pattern paper strips here. I also did the mitered corners. If you look at Lynn's video or if you watch that, you'll see um, her do it and she'll talk about it some in her video. So I did that here. And um, again, that video is linked down below in case you have not got a chance to see it. And um, I would definitely go over and give it a watch because she's an amazing scrapbooker. And I really learned a lot from her. So I got the pattern paper kind of frame here. I think my strips are a little bit wider, but nonetheless, they're there. And I used a tone-on-tone -tone chevron, just like Lynn did here in the back for her large mat. And I have my die cut, which was inspired by hers, along with the circles being filled with various pattern papers, as she did. And on hers, she had, um, again, I don't know the dimensions of this die cut that she had. But mine was 5 by 7 and my photo was 4 by 6 And hers is a large die cut with the smaller photo and they, they balance each other out. On mine, because they were, one was larger than the other, but they were still kind of similar, so therefore it just looked like I'd miscut, like something had gone wrong and it just wasn't working. So I, um, matted them on another piece of pattern paper or cardstock and I added this strip to the bottom to um, kind of make it more blocky if that's a word <laughs> and um, so anyhow I made it more like a block or a grid and um, this is that My Mind's Eye from the bright side the stitched um, sheet of paper and I used that um, instead of just leaving it down like 
open because there was too much space. Lynn had a large embellishment right here and instead of a large embellishment I went ahead and just put my title there and I used the black and white polka dot um, they're like puffy alphas that I purchased at Hobby Lobby and my silhouette to do the title. Um, I embellished the circles here with some brads um, a Studio Calico butterfly that I misted and a stick pin along with a little flag from the sticker sheet and just a little sticker from the sticker sheet as well. And Lynn did her um, journaling in a circle. I did mine as well, but instead of having it overlap the photo on the right hand side, I just put it at the top left inside of one of the circles. Another thing is that I added this border strip which is from crepe paper it is from their valentine's line from last year or the year before i don't remember so i added that and i've used enamel dots um throughout the layout just like lynn did here she had some enamel dots and again her title was here in the embellishment and in the die cut and i had to move mine down here so i think that this was a success i i'm happy with my layout i really like it um it's kind of different for me but again I, I really like it and um, I'm looking forward to the next episode of this of finding another layout to scrap lift and um, thank you so much for watching I hope that you enjoyed and I hope that you're inspired to go out there and find a layout and um, scrap lift it yourself I'd love to see something that you guys did so if you decide to give this a go please PM me and let me know or leave me a comment down below I'd love to see what you do thank you again for watching and have a great night bye bye